Uh, we're talking about dyslexia. Uh, why am I talking about it today? Well, it's National Dyslexia Week. Uh, uh, what's it like? Uh, who knows about it? Who do you tell? When do you tell them? Uh, the Dyslexia Academy is a six-week program that's been launched to help people get back into work or get into work in the first place, and maybe more importantly, to actually stay there. Its aim is to offer uh, job centres uh, this new way of working this new lesson uh, throughout the whole of London in order to keep and help equip people who are dyslexic with the right skills and strategies. So I'm asking you, have you struggled with a job? Did you tell anybody? Did it come out anyway? Nathaniel Hawley is a partnership and community manager at Exceptional Individuals and set up the Academy. Nathaniel, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. So t- tell me a little bit about what you've set up. Um, well, at Exceptional Individuals, we, are, we support people who have a form of neurodiversity, so things like dyslexia. And, I mean, everyone in the team, you know, we, we resonate with it. So we understand what it's like to be unemployed and has a different way of thinking. Because you can go your whole life kind of not really understanding what it is. You kind of get told you have it, but it doesn't really mean much. And maybe you feel dumb or stupid. And actually, we know that's not the case. It's that your brain works in a different way. So we thought, why don't we put all our life experience together and create an academy that we wish we had when we were first looking for work? So in this academy, it's, um, it's about, for the first time ever, really understanding what dyslexia is to you. Can, can, I, can, can, I, can I stop you, Nathaniel? Yes, please. Please, 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 please tell me that you have dyslexia, otherwise you sound incredibly patronising. <laughs> no, yeah, of course I have dyslexia. Well, I don't know what you say, of course. I, don't, I just want to care. But we, you know, well, then tell me then. Tell me about you so before we get into the official bit. Do you mind? Yeah, no. Um, okay, okay, maybe. right. So I'm interested in you, Nathaniel, because I'm trying to get people to ring in to tell me about their experiences. And if I've got you and you've had that experience and you've come to an understanding, a way of working, and now to the point where you can actually help other people, you are fantastic as a case study, as we call it in the business. So, Nathaniel, when was yours diagnosed? Okay, well, um, officially I've got dyslexia, I've also got dyspraxia and mild autism. And the first, um, the other two were, I think diagnosed when I was like two or three. Um, and then dyslexia kind of at 16, but it's always a bit of an awkward age because that's when you have to do another test when you're post-16. Mm-hmm. And, and, and up until then, what were the difficulties that either you had or your parents noticed you having? I mean, I felt like I was always a few years behind all my peers. So, I mean, I learned to read, I think, like when I was post like 11. Um, so everything was a bit delayed, but also things which you would even consider. So I learned to tell the time a lot later. I couldn't tie my shoelaces. Um, and things that kind of my social interactions were always a little bit different. And you don't really understand why. You kind of like, you get put in the bottom set. And it's not that you're not intelligent, you're extremely intelligent, but it's kind of like your ambition gets kind of like lowered before yeah. you even really get a, t- yeah. a chance to understand how your mind works. You see, I didn't understand that until my children started to go to school, because even though officially teachers quite often don't segregate, don't stream, they do teach the children who have the ability of learning quite close together. So the other children know, don't they? No, absolutely. And you get a bit of a reputation for, you know, being a bit slow, not being very intelligent. And you get judged so early on and it does have an impact. Like when it comes to choosing your options, if you're a bit slower than the other kids, you get less subjects. If you get less subjects, you're less likely to get into, say, sixth form. If you don't get into sixth form, you're less likely to go into university. If you're less likely to university to get a decent job. But it does have a massive yeah. knock-on effect so early yeah. on. L- let me ask you about the confidence bit of it then. D- d- yeah. d- d- did you ever doubt your intelligence? I mean, I think the same with most things in life, if you get told it enough, you start to believe it. So, yeah, I did think I was kind of like not very intelligent, but I just thought I was unable to concentrate on really simple things. But it turns out it, I found everything a bit too easy, really. Um, 
I, people tried to make me a generalist and everything. So I was a bit, you know, quite good at math, quite good at English, quite good at science. When really all I found interesting was art. And I feel if I was allowed to just explore the one area I really had a passion in, I would have succeeded a lot, lot earlier. Yeah, I mean that that's the other bit. We'll have that another day about education and about not too oh, yeah. not not too tall, not too short, not too fat, not too thin, not too rich, not too poor. It's kind of like you have to 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 do that in order to survive. When did because change clearly has come because you're now to a point where y- y- you formalised a tactic within a spectrum in order to help other people. When did did you have a light bulb moment? Somebody was your champion. Tell me when it changed. Okay, well, I mean, I guess to begin with, it doesn't happen overnight. So, like, this could happen at any point in in your lifetime. But I think it was, like, kind of when I had no choice. Like, if people have low expectations of you, you tend to stay at those expectations. But I had some, like, difficulties when I was younger. I was a young carer for my mum. And it kind of forced me to be in a position where... I needed to do things which people wouldn't expect I was capable of. Right. And when I did them, I realized, actually, you know what? I do have a unique set of skills. I do things in a slightly different way, but I have just the same, well, equal amount of abilities oh. as anyone else. Right. And yeah. then it was a bit of a spiral and I started doing it. And then I realized that you can inspire people by your own actions. So there is a spectrum, but the fascinating thing for me, and I mean, I've talked about dyslexia before, but not really in the workplace, which is why it's, it's quite interesting for me today. That, that, that how, how much, first of all, do I say when I go for a job, do you think? Broad strokes. Do I, say, do I tick it? Is it a box as a disability? What about if I don't see it as a disability? Could I get away with not telling people? Because uh, if, if I told them, I might not get the job at all. Can you, can you see where I'm going with this? No, absolutely. And, and this is a question people ask us all the time. Um, I'd love to give you a simple answer. <laughs> I would love to say that you should disclose to every employer. And I do think in a few years' time, maybe that will be the case. At the moment, I think it's more about people's understanding. So if you've got an organization which is really understanding, got a great manager, then it really can be in your advantage because when you're covered under the uh, the Equality Act 2010, and... Mm. Black black people tell me that all the time. Disabled people tell me that uh, all all, all the time. Gay people tell me that all the time. You you know and I know it may well be, but unless you can prove it, which you can't at a a casting audition or interview, then actually it is still at the behest of the person uh, who is interviewing you to operate some subjective view of whatever you tell them. Yes, and I mean, there are ways. Obviously, that's a starting point. The second point is government, like a disability competent employer. Um, But again, it's only as good as the organization that enforces it. Um, What I I typically do is is I take it case by case, really. For us, I I look for organizations which are actively looking for diversity. And not diversity just to tick a box. So not just because someone is gay, someone is black, someone is from minority background. but But diversity as in a different mindset, a different way of thinking. Mm. And I think more and more employers are seeing the advantages of having a diverse mindset. I tell you, th- th- there was a really interesting conversation the other day about b- b- designer babies. And there was a, a, a dwarf professor who came on and who pointed out that most of the tech firms who made most of the innovations that we celebrate so much are, are worked in by people with a form of autism. So the way the brain works and the challenges that you have and how you overcome them ca- can by some organizations see it, be seen as a blessing. No, I totally agree. I mean, I try not to go too far into the analogy, but I do think having like some neurodiversity can be like having a superpower. I mean, if you don't really <laughs> understand it, it's a disadvantage, yeah, yeah, okay? Yeah, because yeah. you're not really sure how your mind works. Okay, but if but I've so never had able... it, if I've never had yeah. it, Lathaniel, uh, you know, and I've yeah. got to have, l- l- like some of the people here, I've got to have particular types of screens and I've got to have particular... Do you understand how I might be fearful of it as an employer? I mean, of course, we're all scared of things we don't really understand. Mm. I mean, it's like people are scared of, like, saying the wrong words, they're scared of, like, the wrong interactions. So, I mean, what I say to that, I think 
the industry is changing. More employees are becoming more aware, but it is very much up to the individual to not just know they have, say, dyslexia, but to really understand what it means to them and how they learn. Mm. If you can tell someone what the issue is, but then give them a solution, they're far more likely to listen to you rather than just disregard you. Absolutely. Could you just tell us a little bit, apologies, because I've spent so long talking about you, and you are fascinating, by the way, that I have not asked you you very much about the whole partnership and the whole scheme. Tell us a little bit about this six-week program. Okay, well, I mean... We've been supporting people for about four years now with dyslexia, and we realize there's so much talent out there that's just kind of getting missed by employers. And so far, there's a lot of things which try to make organizations um, change their way of thinking. But we thought, why don't we put the power back into the individual? So in this academy, we look for people who are extremely intelligent, but have neurodiversity, have dyslexia, and just aren't kind of getting a knowledge. So we're looking at, okay, one, do they know what it is, understanding it. If they want to disclose, how do they disclose in the correct way? How do you get noticed? And we create things like video CVs, which it shows more about personality than like qualifications or public speaking, which allows someone to turn their struggle into actually their unique selling point. So it's just about changing mindsets, really, and creating a level playing field and maybe building a bit of a community to show that you're not the one, you're not the, like, odd one out. You're actually part of this massive movement of people who think in a different way. And how do people find out a little more? If anybody's listening to this and they'd like to find out more information, bump heads or whatever it might be, Nathaniel, what could they do? Okay, well, we're... um, we're a social enterprise and we're definitely a community, so we need as many people to get involved as possible for this to work. And get involved, all you have to do is go to um, www.exceptionalindividuals.com, um, just leave us a message and speak to your job coach if you're at the job centre or if you're at an organisation. And if we can build up enough demand, enough people showing the benefits, then we're able to roll this out nationwide. We're starting with London and then hopefully, you know, then domination, you know, fingers crossed. Well done, well done. Aim big, always aim big. Nathaniel, a pleasure speaking to you. I wish you the very best of luck. Uh, that's uh, Nathaniel Hawley there talking to me about, um, he's a partnership and community manager. Uh, they come up with this, way of helping employers and helping uh, prospective employees. We're talking...